Hey everyone, Mr. Sugeno here. In today's video, we're going to go over the best PlayStation 2 emulator on PC, PCSX2. I do apologize if my face looks a little pink. I just got back from vacation and I'm still slightly sunburned. So first and foremost, PCSX2 is by far the best PlayStation 2 emulator to use on PC. To download this emulator, head over to PCSX2.net. I'll leave a link in the description below. So once you're there, head over to download, get PCSX2 here. It's for Windows, Linux, or Mac. Since I'm on a Windows PC, I'm gonna click the Windows release. The next step, is to download this program. Be careful, this here, this is an ad. So where it says continue, this is an actual ad. Head over to the right side here where you can see download. The version that you'll want to get is the standalone installer. Uh, it's currently 1.4.0. If this does update, I might post an updated video, but at the time of filming, this is 1.4.0. I click the download button here. It's roughly 17.01 megabytes. For this emulator to run, you will also need to use your PlayStation 2 BIOS. If you're wondering what a BIOS file looks like, you can head over to emulation.gamertechwiki.com and I'll leave a link to this in the description below. Under the heading PlayStation 2, you can see there are two sources for BIOS files and this will give you an idea of the BIOS files that you will need to use from your PlayStation 2. Once you've downloaded PCSX2, you can run the installer right away. So the first thing that brings up are some options. I recommend keeping them all checked. That way you do get the start menu shortcuts. You do get an easy desktop shortcuts and the other two you should have checked anyway. This does not take very long to install at all. The emulator is pretty small in size. Once you have PCSX2 up and running, the first thing to do is to go to config, go to plugin slash BIOS selector. In here, head over to BIOS and make sure to select the folder that you have put the PlayStation 2 BIOS in. If the emulator has successfully read the BIOS that you've put in the BIOS folder, they will show up here. For me, I just have one BIOS and that is right here. I've selected it, so the emulator will use this BIOS file. The next step is to configure your gamepad. So if you head over into the plugins, you can see different labels right here. The one that you will need to use is pad right here. So I'm using uh, lily pad. You can also use poco palm if you want, um, but I use lily pad. If you click configure, it'll bring up the menu, head over to pad one, and you can map all of your inputs. The next thing that you might want to take a look at is your video settings. Uh, if you head over into video, so it's in the config uh, video, and then go to the plugin settings, it'll list, it hopefully lists your correct graphic adapter. If it doesn't, uh, make sure you've selected your graphics card um, and there are different renderers here. This is the area where you can increase the quality of picture in your game so you can upscale your graphics a little bit and you can also solve graphical issues that you're experiencing. If you are experiencing issues running a game, there are different options here so for example, some games, I actually need to switch up the renderer used in order to get the game to work properly. Not all the games that I have will work with the same renderer. For example, if I want to emulate this game here, this is the Street Fighter 15th Anniversary Collection. Um, I actually have to use the Direct 3D 11 software renderer with my video card. This disables all the upscaling modes However, that makes this game run properly. Now, if I want to emulate a different game, for example, Capcom versus SNK2 here, I will have to change this into Direct 3D 11 hardware. And when Direct 3D 11 hardware is selected, I can now upscale if I feel like it and make the picture better. So if you're using software settings, for example, OpenGL, uh, Direct 3D 9, Direct 3D 11, you do not have the option to upscale picture, for example, the internal resolution, the texture filtering, anything like that. Um, however, if you are using hardware renderers, 
then you can upscale. So it might not be a uniform solution. One setting on here might not be good with all of your PlayStation 2 games. You may need to change this based on the game that you're playing. And this is one area too, where you can feel free to fiddle around with a little bit. Uh, this area requires some fine tuning in order to get the game to work properly. Sometimes you'll run into weird uh, lines in your game, maybe some graphical tearing, maybe some slowdown. This will be the area, or at least one of the areas, that you can take a look at to help improve your experience. I also recommend if you head over into the config menu, go to emulation settings, and head over down to speed hacks. There is one checkbox here that is the MTVU, it's the multi threaded micro VU1, and it's a hack. It says good speed up and high compatibility may cause hanging. Uh, recommended if you have three plus cores. So I have eight cores in my processor right now, which is more than enough. So I'm going to use this. If you have a dual core processor, I probably wouldn't recommend checking this option, but if you have three or more, most PCs nowadays have four, um, feel free to check this. The next step is to locate the .iso of the game you want to play. Now, if you have taken the images off your disks, they should be in ISO format. If they are not in ISO format, they will not work. So if you head over into CDVD, go to ISO selector and hit browse, you can select your ISO. For example, I have three games in my library here, Capcom vs. SNK2, Street Fighter Alpha Anthology, and Street Fighter Anniversary Collection. So I select the game that I would like to run. The last step is to head over to System, and there are two options that will let you play your game. Boot C DVD Full and Boot C DVD Fast. The Full option will boot the PlayStation 2 from beginning right into your game. So you'll see the PlayStation 2 startup screen and all of that. If you head over to Boot C DVD Fast, it will boot straight into the game. So let's select that option now. The game is now up and running. I have the sound muted. A telltale sign to know if your game is running well or not is to look at the speed here. So in this area here, it says speed 100% and shows me roughly at 60 frames per second. If this is dropping anywhere in like 20 or 10 or 30 or 40, uh, pretty much anything under 60, you know the game isn't really running at full speed. This is the game too. It's in a window mode. I can full screen it very easily if I would like. Um, it does slow down a bit if I'm running at full screen. So if I put it in windows mode here, so you can see it's running at about 70% speed. Uh, if I put it back into a smaller window, it bumps right back up to 100%. So if you are running into speed issues as well, uh, just take a look at the window size and fiddle with that in order to get it to work properly. If you are still having issues getting PS2 games to run, if you head over into the config menu, then plugin and BIOS selector uh, under GS settings here, uh, you can try different options to see what works for you. This will vary based on the PC build that you have. So one solution might not work for everyone and feel free just to change this to see if it does work for you. There is a ton of trial and error within this emulator to get it working at full speed. There are a lot of options. It is not simple by any stretch of the imagination. However, this is the best PlayStation 2 emulator for PC. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. If you have any questions about PCSX2, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. I'll just let you know everyone's computer is slightly different. Uh, so what might work on my computer might not work on yours and vice versa. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Thank you, everyone. Take care.